Yeah, it, it is 2020, uh, people. And uh, like I said, it's not just the start. <laughs> you don't go to year. Others are like, whoa, yeah. And, and it's, kind of, it's not just the start of a new year. It is the start of a new decade, which is exciting and scary all at the same time. It kind of... It kind of is. When, when, when I was 15, I, I wanted to be 25. You know, it's like when I was 15, I was like, I can't wait to be 25. I can't wait for the next 10 years when I'm 25. I can do what I want. Now, now, you know, in the next 10 years, I'm going to be 65. I'm like, how do you? I know I look incredible, right? It's just like some of you are like so, so shocked. I, I heard my brother. My brother went to the doctor because he 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 looks yeah well, he looks young young and so that he went to the doctor and he's like I'm 50 53 and the doctor was saying sorry sorry I thought you said 53 and he said yes I did say 53 I hope that happens to me at the doctor's come on so <laughs> but 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 I just started to think in the, in the next decade I'm going to be 60 65 <laughs> that's kind of I'm like how do you slow this baby down come on it's going it really does get get faster as you uh, get older. But it's, it's, it's scary and exciting all at the same, uh, same time. Because we don't, we don't know what the decade will bring. We don't know what the, uh, 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 the year will bring. 2020 is, a, uh, I, I guess, a good thing for clear vision if you get 2020 uh, vision. But we can't always see what is ahead. We can't always grasp what is ahead. But I love what First Corinthians 2, 9 verse says. It says, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined the things that God has prepared for those who love Him. How many know God's prepared some things for you? Do you love Him this morning? You've got to understand God has prepared some things for you. So we can be excited uh, about that. But this is a very important season. Like I say, especially as you get older, it gets more important as, as, as you do get older. And so I, like you, I guess, want to get it right. Yeah. I want to get this next decade because it's critical for me. I'm going to be 65. I'm at that age. You know, I, I, I want to get it right. I don't want to mess it up. I want to get it right. And I've, I've called my message today, Pulpits and Platforms. Pulpits and platforms, who's got the mic? Pulpits and platforms, who's got the mic? The Bible says this, trust in the Lord. How many know that's a good thing? Yeah. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Man, the times I've lent on my understanding, how many, and anyone else you've lent on your, you just, you've tried to do it and it just hasn't worked out. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He shall direct your path. And then it goes on to say, do not be wise in your own eyes. In other words, don't be a know-it-all. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Listen, it will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. And when you're getting to my age, you need some more strength in your bones. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Health to your flesh, strength to your bones. I'm talking about pulpits and platforms. See, the platform here is a special place. The pulpit in many churches that you go to, it is, it is a sacred place. They, they will call the, the pulpit is a sacred place. There are some altars or platforms that when you go onto, you have to take your shoes off because they're like, this is holy ground. It's a special place. It's a sacred place. It's an important place for good reason. And that's why as a church leader, it's, we, we are always careful who we give the platform to. We're always careful who we give the pulpit to. Over the years, I've had people say, oh, I'd love to be able to preach. And I'm like, I, I, it's fine, but I, I don't know you. And so we, we, we're careful who we give the pulpit, pulpit to. We're careful who we give the platform to, who we give the mic to. And you should expect that from me. You should expect that from me. And that is because we understand that the pulpit and platform is a place of influence. It's a place of, of, of authority. So the people you 
place there, and I don't know why that mic is doing that. Why? You want me to take my jacket off? Okay. I thought this was going to be a serious message, Pastor Adam. Still doing it. Why is it doing it? Why is it doing it? <laughs> Settle down. This is the sacred place, you. Jesus. Security escort that man out of the building. You know, that's why as a church leader, we, we always have to be careful who we give the platform or the mic to. Like I said, you should expect that. From me, because we we understand that the pulpit and the platform is a place of influence. It's a place of authority, and so the people you place there, listen, are not perfect, but they're trusted. So they're not perfect, but they're they're trusted. We 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 know we know them, we know them, and and like I said, we we, we never would say anyone up here is perfect and they've got it all together. Because if, if you watch me long enough, you know that's not true. Come on, someone. You didn't have to amen that so vigorously. <laughs> but, 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 it's, but it's true. Not perfect, but trusted. Because this is an important, this is a sacred, sacred place. And we do that because we, we, we understand the power of the platform. We understand the power of the platform to, to shape lives, to save a to save a soul, to shift thinking. We understand the power of the platform to encourage people and offend people. You know, I love it as a, as a minister, and I, I knew someone would do this after the last service, but, but I love it as a, as a minister when you, when you finish preaching, you know, and it's not that you're looking for this and just say, so you know, I'm not looking for this, but it's an, it is encouraging to me when someone says, hey, I was encouraged by your message today. You don't always know. You know, was that, was that okay? And, and in fact, many, many of the times we, we, we have no clue. Was that, you're, you're preaching your heart up, but you don't know. And so when someone comes up and says, man, pastor, that was such a good message. That was a word just for me. It was like you read my file. It's like you knew exactly what I was going through. Or, or hey, I was looking at that scripture just last night. So that really spoke to me. That, that's encouraging to me. I understand the power of the platform to encourage people. And I pray every Sunday that you, you leave this place, I pray that you would feel encouraged. But it also has the power to offend. And I have to be careful with that. I have, over the years, I've been doing this a long time, offended people, not intentionally. And, 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 and it's, a, it's a, I mean, there are some pastors out there who are just like, oh, I'm going to beat the people up. No, Jesus told, told Peter to feed the sheep, not flog them. Come on, somebody. I want to feed you. I want to help you. You should, you should feel as you leave here like, man, I've got something that I can take out and, and, and use in my life. I want it to encourage you. But every now and then I might say something that offends people. I, I, I know one person left the, left the church a while back. It was a couple of years, uh, years ago. And I, I, just over a little statement that I said, and I, I sometimes just have throwaway statements or things that I... That I said, but I, uh, I said this, you know, um, people say the church is full of hypocrites, but there's always room for one more. And somebody left because of that. They, they were like, no, I'm not. Now, I don't know whether they had said the church is full of hypocrites to someone that week and they thought that person had told me and now I'm telling you uh, that, you know, there's always room for one more. You're just, a, I don't know if they were doing that. I know this. I'm never going to use the pulpit. This is a sacred place. I'm never going to use the pulpit to give you a personal correction. I'm never going to use this place to point out, you know, Bob over there. If your name's Bob, I'm very sorry. <laughs> uh, what's another Greek name? Uh, uh, if your name was Anetheus, no, there should be no to anyone who got Anetheus. <laughs> Stand up, Anetheus. <laughs> if your name is a, uh, some, some name, Tony. Yeah, so if your name's, since he's causing trouble, maybe I do need to change that and find. <laughs> but, but if you, you, I'm never going to use that. Listen, you've got to understand when I speak things, I'm not doing it. Excuse me. I'm not doing that. Oh my goodness. Can I change this mic? I don't know why this is doing this. Why is this doing this? It's driving me crazy. Um, yeah, give me a handheld. 
Give it up for this guy, man. He makes it happen. Hallelujah. I don't know why he's like handhelds because I'm not as free as I want to be. And, um, but, 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 I, but I understand that there's the power to offend. And I'm never going to use this place or this pulpit as a thing to bring some personal, you better sort yourself out kind of thing. It's just not right. It's just not what I would do. You, you should know that from me. But there, there, there are times where I might speak something and it might be strong or it might be, but, and you might be dealing with that thing at that very time and you go, who told him about me? Nobody, most of the time. <laughs> but you gotta, you gotta understand, I will not do that. But I understand the power of the pulpit to encourage and offend. It's just, uh, it's just how it is. The, the, the pulpit and the platform have the power to really, they, they really do because the power of words. Uh, the platform on the pulpit has the ability to, to build or destroy, to heal or to hurt. So I have to be careful how I use the platform. So as a, as a leader, who I give the mic to is important as the amplified, the, the, the voice amplified becomes the loudest voice in the room. When I get the mic, I'm the loudest voice in the room. And sometimes people jokingly say, you might disagree with me, but I've got the mic. In other words, I've got the, the platform. I've got that place that, that, that can speak and declare the loudest. Now, I say all of that to simply say this. As you be, begin this decade, as you begin this year, as you begin this next season, I, I, I want to say to you today on the platform and pulpit of your life, Be very careful who you give the mic to. I'll say it again. On the platform and pulpit of your life, be careful who you give the mic to. Be careful who you give the microphone to. Be careful about what voices you allowed to be amplified, the voices that you allowed to be louder than any other. See, there are many voices in today's world vying for our attention, going after some preaching and pulpit time in your life preaching from the pulpit of your heart, preaching from the pulpit of your mind. There are many voices vying for your attention. We have the devil's voice. We have, we have social media's voice. Man, what an influence. I mean, social media is telling you who, who, who you can hang with, how you have to think, what you have to say, how you have to live to be correct because you want to be woke, whatever that means. So you've got all these voices trying to tell you how you should live and how you should think and how you should, how you should do things. Then you've got your own voice and how many know listening to that sometimes, I want to tell you. Man, I can be my own worst enemy. That was a dumb sermon. Who said that I did? You ask anybody who stands up here and preaches afterwards, they're, they're finished, they'll be gone, that was dumb. I could be preaching halfway through the message and looking at you going like this and, 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 and hear, hear my own self saying, this is stupid, nobody likes this. <laughs> absolutely dumb. Look at Tony laughing. <laughs> Why is he laughing? It's a stressful thing, I want to tell you, because sometimes, it, let, let me just tell you, when you don't laugh, it, like... When you laugh at the right places, it's good. But there are other times when I see someone like, <clears throat> and I think, is my fly down? <laughs> Just check. <laughs> it happens. None of this is in my notes. I'm just going with the... <laughs> I've got the mic, yes. But be careful about what voices you allow to be amplified, the voices that you allow to be louder... 
than any other. What voices are speaking? See, there are many voices vying for the platform and pulpit preach time of the platform of your mind and of your heart. That's why Proverbs tells us, guard your heart. Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. It's a platform. It's a pulpit. It's a, it's a place that affects our lives. And so there are many voices and those voices desire to shape and shift your thinking. There are many voices vying for the platform of your life. They desire to shift and shape your thinking and those voices will affect your choices. That even rhymes. Those voices will affect your choices. So be careful who and what you trust with the microphone of your life. Be careful who or what you trust to speak. Choose carefully who you give the microphone of your life to. Because who you give your mic to matters. They become the loudest voice. And so the question and the challenge for us today as we begin this new decade, as we begin this New Year is what or who will have the loudest voice, the biggest say in your life? Who's going to get the mic? In other words, who's going to get the authority? Who's, who, who is it that's going to get the trust? Who's going to get the authority and the power to speak into your, your life? Because I can guarantee you that there'll be some voices that you shouldn't be listening to. Come on. It's just how it is. And so as we begin this year, we want to make sure we give the platform our life of our lives to the right. To that which we trust. And so the question or the challenge for us today is in our life, who are we going to give the mic to, that authority, that power to speak? Are we going to give it to the world or to the word? To the world or to the Word? The scripture, of course, encourages us to trust in the Lord. We read it out in the beginning. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. In other words, don't let the world direct your way. Let the Word direct your way. In fact, Romans tells us, Romans 12, 2, do not conform to the pattern of this world. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world. Like I said, there are so many things trying to, trying to conform us to the way the world thinks. Conform us. Oh, you're just a bigot. You're just a this. You're just a that. If you don't live this way, if you don't do that way. They're, they're, that's why I said one of the biggest challenges of our time is the freedom of speech. But are we going to live by what the world says or by what the word says? Come on. And I want to encourage us in this time, in this day, in this age, as we begin this decade, that we would be people of the Word. Why? Because God says, Thy Word is a lamp unto thy feet and a light unto thy path. Jesus said this. He said, The words that I that I speak to you, the words that I speak to you, understand, this is, this, this is Christ speaking. He says, the words that I speak to you, a spirit and their life. Friends, I want to tell you, again, there are so many words out there that bring death and hopelessness and loss. But the words He speaks to us, a spirit and life. So we say, King Jesus, speak to us. So 2020, this, this year, this decade, it's important. And so my encouragement to you today is give the mic to Him. Give your mic to Him. Let Him have the pulpit of your world. 
And give Him the authority in your life to speak the loudest. Oh, there's going to be many voices speaking, but give Him the authority to speak the loudest. Psalm 20 verse 7, it says, Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. Chariots and horses, of course, represent the things that one might put their trust in. Things that one might put their trust in other than God. It could be their, their wealth. It could be their career, it could be their relationship, you know, if I can just meet this one, if I can just marry that one, and then I'll be, you know, what's your chariot, what's your horse, what's that thing you're trusting in other than God? The exhortation of Scripture is that trust Him. Trust Him. See, this decade you will be presented, there's no doubt about it, you will be presented with many life-changing choices. Be aware of the voices that speak. Beware of the voices that influence your decisions. Jesus said this in Matthew 6, He said, Seek ye first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Seek Him first. Last year, I got to speak to the Manawatu Ministers Association. It was pretty cool. I, there was about a hundred of them there, all ministers from different denominations. And they said, come and speak to us. And so I had a great time, time there. But you see, I was their second choice. I know, right? And so when I turned up there, Dale, if you know Dale, he's spoken here. Dale had rung me up that week and said, Adam, you've got to help me out. My first choice. Couldn't do it. He's pulled out. He said, will you come up and, 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 and do this? I, I desperately need somebody to come in. I said, oh, Dale, I'm your second choice, right? So yeah, and so when I got up there, I just said, hey guys, it's great to be here, but I'm just, I'm upset that I'm your second choice. Come on. I was the second choice. Sometimes we make Jesus our second choice, people. I'll just do it my own sake. See, that's where we try and do it with our own understanding. Yeah, I think I can do it better. And Jesus becomes our second choice. He becomes the, the one. But the Bible says to seek Him first. Like you, you know, you've heard me say it many times. Pastor Andre Alafia said, I find when I don't seek Him first, I, or when I don't put Him first, I don't put Him anywhere. Seek Him first. Don't make Him second. Don't make Him your second choice. Well, that didn't work out. I tried doing my own thing. So I'm gonna, I, I, I understand there's grace for that. But why not seek Him first? And all other things shall be added. Why, why, why not face Him before Facebook? It's gone quiet in this little church. See, I'm believing for God's favor. I'm believing for God's favor over, over this. I love that scripture. What was that scripture again, Helen? Just, just... Yeah, say it, say it again, what a nice and loud voice. The year. With abundance. Somebody say, I receive that. Come on. So I, I, I believe in the favor of God. I believe that God, God's favor is for us. But the truth is, we don't know what will happen tomorrow. We don't know. The Bible even says don't even boast about tomorrow because we don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow. And that's why I'm always, I guess, a little bit careful. When I say, I don't know what happened in 2018, but 2009 is going to be your best year ever. I have no idea what's going to happen. Come on. I have no idea what's going to happen. We don't know. The Bible says don't. You can't even say that because you don't even know what will happen even tomorrow. That's why we trust Him. Listen, because we don't know, my favorite saying, one of them, got many, is we don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. Oh, we know He's got the whole world in His hands. 
Sing it, Tony. No. <laughs> don't. We don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. That's why we should trust in the Lord with all of our heart. That's why we should lean not on our own understanding. That's why in all of our ways we should acknowledge Him because as we do that, it says He shall direct our path. And listen, I, I say this every time I read this scripture, but it's so important. I, I don't know if we, we get it. Simply this, whatever you acknowledge will direct your path. Whatever you acknowledge will direct you. You, 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 you acknowledge fear in your life, that's going to direct you. You, you, you. you acknowledge social media in your life, whatever social media says, what's Kim saying? You know, what, what, what's, what, what's the latest this or latest who's be, who might someday be a has-been, but who's cool at the moment and what are they saying about how I, I, I should live? You know, we, 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 come on. Whatever you acknowledge, if you acknowledge that, that is what will direct your path. So don't let the world direct you. Let the Word Direct your path. And all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. So that, again, don't be a wise guy. Don't be someone who's smart in their own eyes. I've tried it. It doesn't work. Fear Him. Depart from evil. Well, everybody else is doing it. So, don't you do it. Because here's what it'll do. It'll bring health to your flesh and strength to your bones. And I want to do this decade strong. Come on, somebody. And I pray you want to do this decade strong. So the keyboard worship team people can come and Tony, you can come too. <laughs> But I'm saying, give him, not Tony, <laughs> but give him the mic of your life. Give Christ the microphone, the platform, the pulpit of your life. I want to encourage you to do that today. As we ease into the new year, as we, we, we search for clarity of God, what would you have us do among the many voices that are out, out there? God, we desire to hand you the microphone to the platforms of my life. I give you the microphone to the pulpit of my life. I want to bring myself under your authority, under your grace, under your word. And, and, and you've got to understand sometimes when God speaks, He might say things that can make you uncomfortable. Sometimes His answer will be no. Sometimes he, he won't, listen, you know it. His thoughts are not our thoughts. His, his ways are not our ways. Sometimes he'll say, that's not the way I want. But I want to go that way. He's like, don't, I want you to go this way. Give him the pulpit of your life. Give him the microphone to your world. what He's prepared for us. As that Scripture in Corinthians said, for those who love Him. And of course, we all say we love Him, but, but Jesus said, you, you, you're my disciples if you do. If you obey what I command. If you live the life I call you to live.
Let's be ones who follow Him and give Him all authority to speak into our world. To tell us to go left when we want to go right. To tell us to, to stop when we'd rather go forward. Let's allow Him that. Would you, in a moment, I'm going to pray it, just a simple prayer of commitment for, for that which is ahead. And would you allow this prayer to be your prayer as we seek to move forward into this next season, an important season of our lives? Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? And I'm going to pray this prayer and I actually why not stand let's just stand put your hands out like this all you're doing by doing that is just saying God I'm ready to receive what what you have every head bowed and every eye closed today God we we say help us Help us to love you as we begin this year and this this decade. Help us, God, to love you with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our soul, and with all of our strength. God, we submit ourselves to you, King Jesus. You are the You are the Word, Holy Spirit. You are the one who convicts and comforts. And today we give you the mic to the platform and pulpit of our lives. That you might speak to us. That we might hear your voice and discern your way. Today we we begin this year and this decade by submitting ourselves to you. Your voice, your word, your way. Help us to do this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Can we give our King a clap offering and a shout? Thank you, Jesus. Just before I close, maybe you're here and you haven't put your trust in Him. Maybe you're here and you've never given your life to Christ. Maybe someone brought you along to church or whatever, or you just read it or saw it on the internet or whatever, and you've turned up here today. But even as I've been speaking, you know that you're not right with God. You know, in fact, that you're far away from Him. But even as I'm speaking, even as I'm speaking right now, you know you need to get right with God. You know you need to make your peace with Him. And I know you might be here and you might be going, but I see you don't know how bad I am. You don't know the things that I've done. See, see, I don't, but He does. And here's the beauty of the gospel. The gospel is not about how bad you are. It's about how good He is. We, we, we can't do it ourselves. The Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. We can't do it. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, so that whomsoever believeth in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Christ did it for you. He died your death so that you could live His life life. Do you need to get right with Him today? You need to say, God, I I haven't been trusting in You with all of my heart. But today I want to. Today I want to give my life to You. You know, know, the Bible says He knocks on the door of our heart and if we would open it, He will come. He won't force His way in. We, We just say, yes, yes, God. I sense You knocking. I open the door of the throne of my heart and allow You to be 
of my life. If that's you today and you know you need to get right with God, in a moment I'm going to pray a prayer. And if you want to be included as a part of that prayer, just where you are, I'm not going to call you out or it's just saying, in a moment I'm going to ask you to put your hand up and all you're doing is acknowledging, that's me, I need to get right with God. With every head bowed and every eye closed. If you're saying, Pastor, that's me. I want to be included in that prayer. I need to get right with God today. I need to trust Him with my life. With no one looking around, if that's you, wherever you're standing, would you just put your hand up high in the air so I can see it? Just say, that's me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you down the back there. Thank you in the middle here. Thank you over to the side here. Anyone else? Thank you down here. Anyone else? You know you need to get right with God. Thank you way down the back there. Amen. Amen. Just slip those hands down. Is there anyone here who knows they they should have put their hand up, but they didn't? For whatever reason, maybe fear a man or worried about what someone else was thinking, but you know you should have put your hand up. Who are you? Can you just put your hand up now and just say, that's me, Pastor, that's me. And I put my hand up, but I know I should have. Where are you? Hallelujah. You know you need to get right with God. Get a nice and high so I can see you. this prayer all together in a nice loud voice Lord Jesus I come to you today a sinner in need of a saviour today I repent I turn from my sin and seek to follow you today be my saviour and my Lord wash me and cleanse me make my life as white as snow This I ask in Jesus' name.